At the center of downtown Atlanta lays a vast post-industrial landscape known as the Gulch. It was once the lifeblood of the city, the nexus of Atlanta's former transportation hub. Today, the tracks and stations that served it have mostly disappeared. Viaducts that were necessary for the continuity of the streetscape now fly above a toxic wasteland of disheveled parking lots below. The modernist notion that physical structures yield patterns of socialization tends to focus our understanding of the city on a series of fixed, rigid, spatial frames. The result is that urban design is too often reduced to an examination of the dialectical relationship of object to space, of solid to void. While we neither denounce nor exclude spatial form as an important component of urban design, we assert that the reduction of the discourse to it is an oversimplification, one that is both limiting and problematic. The processes that shape a city are composed of a multiplicity of determinants that include cultural expression, the large-scale organizational techniques of infrastructure, environmental protection, planning and zoning ordinances, and the capitalization necessary for the development. While well, they are seemingly unrelated, desperate and heterogeneous fields of interest, desire and action, they nevertheless spread and grow in relationship to each other. The resultant spatial forms of a city are therefore dynamic and provisional, continuously on their way to becoming something else. The dynamic nature of such relationships suggests that a linear mechanistic model of thinking would prove to be inadequate. This highlights the necessity of what James Corner has termed ecological thinking. The discipline of ecology suggests that individual agents acting across the broad field of operation produce incremental cumulative effects that continually evolve the shape of environment over time. The dynamic relationships and agencies of processes are highlighted by ecological thinking. A particular spatial form is merely a provisional state of matter on the way of becoming something else. Cities and infrastructure are just as ecological as forests and rivers. Corner claims we have yet to understand cultural, social, political, and economical environments as embedded in and symmetrical with the natural world. The promise of landscape urbanism is the development of space-time ecology that treats all forces and agents work in the urban field and considers them as continuous network of interrelationships. Landscape urbanism proposes to view the entire metropolis as a living arena of processes and exchanges that over time allow for new forces and relationships to prepare and alter the ground, creating ever new activities and patterns of occupancy. The intention is not so much to design the city as to create an ecology of various systems and elements that set in motion the potential for a diverse network of interaction. The urban project is seen as both instigator and accelerator working across vast surfaces. Consistent with this line of thought, we propose a more rhizomatic approach to the problem of the gulch. The rhizome is composed of the logic of conjunction and pragmatics. A cautious misreading of the losing guitar's a thousand plateaus allows us to expound upon this conceptualization of the project. In the opening chapter, they claim, the rhizome connects any point to any other point and its traits are not necessarily linked to traits of the same nature. It brings into play very different regimes of signs and even non-signed states. The rhizome is reducible to neither the one nor the multiple. It is comprised not of units but of dimensions, or rather directions in motion. It has neither beginning nor end, but always a middle, from which it grows and which it overspills. When a multiplicity of this kind changes dimension, it necessarily changes in nature as well undergoes a metamorphosis. The rhizome is not a multiple, it's a multiplicity, spreading and connecting with other multiplicities within a non-centered structure. The Luz and Guitari refer to this symbiotic interaction as a deterritorialization and re-territorialization. Our understanding of the rhizome comes from a mapping of this symbiosis. The coordinates of such topographical mapping are not determined by theoretical analysis. Instead, they are oriented toward the experimentation in contact with the real, with pragmatics. It begins with questioning what the rhizome functions with, into what other multiplicity it is inserted, and into what new multiplicity it has metamorphosed. A topography is then produced, constructed from the strata, the lines of movement and intensity of its deterritorialization and reterritorialization. The history of the rhizome, or more accurately, the history of its topographical mapping, is our collective memory. 
It does not reproduce an unconscious, it constructs the unconscious. Like the losing guitarist rhizome, a city is not composed of discrete units operating within its discrete set of rules. It is composed of multiplicities spreading and connecting with other multiplicities within a non-centered structure. The multiplicity assumes diverse forms, from ramified surface extensions in all directions to the coalescing of diverse acts, linguistic, perceptive, mimetic, gestural, and cognitive, into bulbs and tubers. Each multiplicity is a unique assemblage of heterogeneity, not a world to be reproduced. Its dynamic nature means that the multiplicity is not made in a sense of a finalized unity. It is always in a state of intermediacy, a flux, a resistance, and change. At any given moment, it is in the middle of the transitioning stage, having only reached a plateau in its metamorphosis. The multiplicity ceaselessly establishes connections between semiotic, material, social, political, and aesthetic flows independently of any recapitulation that may be made of a scientific or theoretical corpus. It is the idea of flows and territories that drives the process of urban formation in this project. The process begins with the identification of a series of discrete territories in and around the site and the global transportation systems that of necessity flow through it. The area of entertainment to the north of the site encompasses Centennial Olympic Park, CNN Center, Phillips Arena, the Georgia Dome, and the Georgia World Congress Center. Much of the current activity that happens in this area is highly transient and dependent on the events scheduled in these venues. To the east of the Gulch is Underground Atlanta, an urban mall that exists in the undercarriage of the viaducts. A more constant area of entertainment, it does not experience the same amount of pedestrian volume that the larger venues to the west receive on a regular basis. This historic area is the location of the Zero Mile Marker, the point of convergence of the three rail lines that founded the city of Atlanta. The Gulch is bracketed to the north and south by historic and residential neighborhoods. A fairly popular district to the north sits between Centennial Olympic Park and the Peachtree Corridor. This neighborhood stays very active thanks to the myriad of uses and a large student population. South of the Gulch lies the historic Castleberry Hill District, where older warehouse buildings are being converted to residential lofts to accommodate a growing art community. To the west lies the residential neighborhood of Vine City. Largely isolated from the city by the Gulch, this predominantly lower-income neighborhood is also the home of the historic black colleges of Atlanta University and Spelman College. Like the rhizome, they are deterritorialized, their vitality drawn into the field of the Gulch where they are re-territorialized and coalesce into the tuber, where they once again deterritorialize and extend back out, re-territorializing into the surrounding landscape. The organizing principle of the rhizome generates the new topography, a new landscape that provides an activated pedestrian connection between the various territories, connecting areas that function as modes of entertainment, residential activity, and historical relevance. The organizing principle of the rhizome generates the new topography, a new landscape that provides an activated pedestrian connection between the various territories, connecting areas that function as modes of entertainment, residential activity, and historical relevance. The topographical changes that are an inherent part of the design of the site accommodate a series of on-site retention ponds, reservoirs, and rain gardens. These low areas are designed to create wildlife habitat while also serving as filtration for surface water runoff. Additionally, the heat island effect is reduced by the inclusion of green roofs. Onto this new topography is mapped a series of the global transportation systems, the current MARTA lines, proposed commuter rail lines that will connect the city to a series of edge cities around the metro area and the main arterial roads that serve to move large volumes of traffic in and around the city. Roads within the existing site are modified and new street grids mapped to improve local connectivity. The origin of the city lies in transportation. The railroad tracks that stretched across the continent to join at a point on the Piedmont Plateau. The single most significant artifact of the city, the zero mile marker, currently lies out of sight, buried under a viaduct. The rice home reveals it, bringing it into the consciousness of the people who live here. The old freight depot is renovated and celebrated in the plan as part of the new tourist information center. This history is celebrated in the rice home with the inclusion of a history of transportation museum and a reveal of the train tracks in key locations.
topographic landscape of the red zone provides a new green plaza for the city. The central tuber provides venues for outdoor culture and social activities, including an amphitheater, barbecue patios, multiplex movie theater, interactive water features, open fields, and a restaurant. Just south of the tuber are playing and recreation fields, including a basketball field, soccer field, tennis and basketball courts, and a skate park. Throughout the rhythm pedestrian paths, jogging trails and bike paths are also mapped as a means of stimulating alternative means of connectivity. The Western Rhizome creates a formal connection between the tuber and the Vine City through the introduction of walking trails, leisure, area, and habitats. At its westernmost extension adjacent to the Marta Station, a new community center for Vine City is introduced, one that includes a playground, a series of public pavilions, the RISOM also introduces community vegetable gardens and an open-air farmer's market as a means of encouraging nutritional education and access to quality fresh produce. Castle Berry Hill has a burgeoning art community and a vibrant art walk. The Southwest RISOM allows for the future expansion of this community's activities through the creation of a shallow water feature and public plaza for art fairs and markets. The Rhizome provides a substantial increase in residential stock and density through the creation of a new green neighborhood, Villa Verde, in the underground area between Vine City and the Gulch. With retail on the ground floor and residential units above, the building responds to the complex series of overlapping zoning ordinances and their varying fars. The neighborhood also takes the form of a sustainably responsive city with green roofs and urban gardens as part of a built environment playing a large role in the city's ecological responsiveness. The three mixed-use towers at the center of the rhizome provide a sense of enclosure to the civic space on the tuber, while creating a visual presence on the city skyline. The double centennial tower to the north wraps the historic Glen Hotel and makes a gesture towards Centennial Olympic Park through the continuation of Greenscape and Plaza. The International Tower to the southwest terminates International Plaza with an amphitheater. The tallest of the three towers anchors the center of the plan. It sits atop a new multimodal station, linking MARTA, the proposed commuter rail lines, buses and taxis. All of the connecting pathways running from opposing rhizomes converge in this area, making it the main node of connectivity for both the mass transit of Atlanta and for the site. The master plan is rounded out by the introduction of nine infill towers that maximize the density and FAR of SPI-1. They continue the morphology of the street grid and provide a clear demarcation of the rhizome's edge while maintaining permeability of the street grid.